Hey, brothers and sisters, the Reverend, and I am here with uh, Larry Hall, and we're looking at the uh, third power amps, uh, which uh, Larry has become a big fan. Uh, I'm a former Marshall guy, yes? Yes. Like, since you were like 12? 17. 17. <laughs> All right, so we got a couple things to look at. First here is the um, HLH series. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, now back now, to the now, there you go. That is a bitch and oh, God, that's awesome. I love the <laughs> quilting on that. It's awesome. Okay. Um, so we're starting with the uh, HLH HD 100 series. Um, what can you tell us about this amp before you start playing it? Okay. Well, pretty much in a nutshell, um, it's a hot rotted Marshall. Um, uh, it's, it's got more, if you crank the gain wide open, you get kind of a Zach Wild kind of a bite out of it. If you back the gain off to about seven, you get kind of an old Van Halen one, Van Halen two. Um, you back the gain off a little bit more, you get kind of more of that uh, late 60s kind of kinks kind of a thing. Um, back the gain off a little bit more, you get about a Fender Twin Vox kind of a vibe off of it. Um, the EQ on it is extremely sensitive, so like with a lot of the Marshalls, if you want a little bit more treble on it, you find yourself jamming them up. If you jam this one up, it gets real tangy fast. So, you know, you're going to find yourself just doing like one or two little cranks and, and fine tuning your sound. Um, the EQ set on it right now is pretty much the EQ set I've used since I, the, the stuff's come out of the box. It's just incredible. Okay. Um, the lead. The little knob that says lead there, um, uh, you can attach a foot switch option um, to the back. So if you're not working at a gig where there's a sound guy and you need to boost your solos, um, uh, you just hit the switch and that knob actually gives you from zero to 10. And how much it goes uh, up. And it, it doesn't affect or change the tone at all. It's pretty cool. A lot, a lot of those boosts will end up uh, uh, overdriving a little bit. Um, all this does is make it one. So this isn't like a two-channel amp, like no. my Mark III or something no, like that. It's it's it's, it's, a, it's a one-channel balls to the wall amp, um, hundred watt head. Uh, you get a few little extra features that you don't normally see on on a lot of other amps. Um, the switch between the the mid voicing is smooth and bold, and uh, I'm sure Jamie Scott could uh, give you the exact definition of what it does. But the, switching it down to bold with a heavy drive really gives you that total metal in your face brute force sound. Um, with gain wide open in the smooth, it kind of gives you more of the Santana feel, in my opinion. Um, you know, so they're just once you find the tone you're looking for. Unless you're going to buy about half a dozen of these heads, that's what you're going to get with this amp because there's not any other channels. You can't go, well, here's my clean and here's my dirty and here's my medium and here's my rhythm and here's my... That's not going to happen. Find what you love and that, then that's your, that's your daily meat and potatoes tone. Okay. It does have an effects loop on the back. The effects loop is insert style, which means that your outboard processing, whether it's a pedal board or it's uh, a rack mounted piece, does not go through the tone, it sits on top of the tone. So it's not squashing the tone. So if you've got a crappy processor, um, the only thing you're going to do is put crappy processing on top of great tone. You're not going to inhibit the great tone with crappy processing, if that makes sense. You know, it does make sense. We okay. can talk about insert style at some other point yep. um, and go. show how, what, exactly how that works. Okay, so let's, uh, let's hear it a little bit. So I got it set up for kind of the uh, old 60s style uh, Fender Twin vibe right now. Okay. So I'm just going to run a couple of bar chords uh, get, so you can hear the chime of the, of the strings, hopefully the guitar is still in tune. Okay. Here's uh, just the, uh, uh, the bridge pickup. That, that E chord sounded like the opening of Rocky Mountain Way, man. It was like... Okay, so um, uh, 
Okay, so that's that's the uh, kind of the Fender Twenty. That's yeah. kind of like your cleanest. Well, it, it can get. I mean, it get cleaner than that, but for cleaner than that, 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 I would call that clean with a little bit of a bite, you know. Right. Just kind of get that shimmer off of it. Um, you can get a little bit cleaner, but I, I'm not a clean guy. So if you guys want to make your cleaner, go buy one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna break this app. Do something it doesn't want to do because it wants to scream. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push the preamp gain up to four the preamp gain was on about two we're going to push it up to four i'm going to bring the master volume down so i don't kill the microphone for the uh for the recording here and uh i would call this kind of the uh bad company kind of a you know early 70s uh, uh kind of a tone and um uh you know you get that nice big a chord kind of a thing <laughs> preamp a little bit more we get into kind of that old uh, Van Halen 1 Van Halen 2 kind of a vibe um, you know uh It's, uh, it's, 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 there, it's so. right, yeah, it's definitely there. So um, I'll leave it on bold and, and I'll just kind of kick it up into the what, what I call the, the big ball range. Now, the amp does get a little bit noisy. Um, so 100 watt head, I've got the volume on four, I've got the gain on about nine. So, I, you know, pretty much if it was a boogie, you know, it would be really loud. Well, and but, I have a Mark III, trust me, yeah. at that, at that so, thing is louder than hell. So, so. I, I, I don't know that I necessarily think that this little bit of amp buzz is a bad thing. Um, it's, it's pretty standard once you start getting into the higher gains or the higher volumes. Um, for me personally, what would make the uh, HLA series amp perfect would be if it was about 15 watts. You know, because then we could just crank everything to 11, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, uh, w this is pretty much the full-on, what I would call the Zach Wild gain. And, uh, you know, we're not using EMG pickups with this, so it's not going to be a dead-on Zach Wild. Right. But, uh... It's cheap by boutique amp standards. Um, uh, I think this comes in at about twenty-four, twenty-five hundred dollars. Um, Which is cheap at boutique yeah. standards. If you buy uh, what the uh, the high watt head, um, this similar to this, you're looking at about probably thirty-five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great head, but you're still looking at thirty-five hundred dollars. If you um, even I think the triple rectifiers are, are, are twenty five to three thousand, um, give or take. And yeah. You probably find them used on eBay for for a little less than that, but. Um, uh, the bad cats are going to run you twenty-five to thirty-five hundred dollars. Um, what's that one boutique amp brand? It's got like three knobs on it. Everything body thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. Um, matchless. Yeah, that's going to cost you about six hundred thousand dollars for a matchless version of this. <laughs> so anyway, that be the HLA series HD one hundred in a nutshell. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll be moving down to the British Dream. That's a whole other story. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Yes, sir.